Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take our image viewer solution that we did before, and it's here on, on our page. And if we scroll down here, um, we can come down and take a look at the code. This is procedural. Let's change this to object-oriented programming. So I've gotten a lot of it done. Let's take a look at the code. And so I've made an image viewer class. I've inherited from FL window. I have uh, created the init f uh, method. But notice I've done this slightly differently. And, and I, I have the ability to change this at will. So if you remember the original code, if we, if we go to the original code, you notice that when we actually created it, we set the, the picture width first, and then we had the button width. And then from that, the window width was calculated. Now, the window height was an arbitrary value which would change depending on the aspect ratio of the picture. So this, the window height was absolutely not important, not important. But notice that I have to follow FLTK's um, arguments in order to s create the window, which is x, y width and height. So I had to calculate these values, or at least the, the window width, before I actually made the window. In my case, that's not really the case. Because here, I'm actually supplying the position x and y, but I'm not p supplying the window width or the window height. Instead, I'm supplying the picture width and the button width. Okay? Now, having said that, before I actually go in and call the init method of the base class, which is right here on line 12, I go ahead and I do my calculations first. So because I need the picture width in this function down here, if I kind of scroll down, I need picture width in this function uh, right there. You can see that I decided then I need this picture width to be a class attribute uh, or a class field. So therefore, I put self in front of it. The other thing which I did is I got rid of the global. So if you notice, uh, I used x as, okay, so this is interesting. Notice this, this global x I used, perhaps not the best variable to use, but there's two things I want to mention about this. One, I used this because I had to increment this value here, and I had to know which picture I'm on when when I was when I was uh, flipping through the images and I click on these bars on the left and the right hand side I had to know which image I'm on to display the correct image so when I click on this on the when I click on this right bar I want to go to the next image so therefore I was incrementing X and therefore it had to remember the value so I had to use global well guess what now that we're using object-oriented programming, I don't need to use that. However, I did change the, um, the variable name. Now, why did I do that? Here's something that is really interesting which happened. And that is, because I'm importing the library as from FLTK import star, this, if I was to keep the same variable, this would have been self.x. Well, wait a minute. Um, what is self? This this whole class is inheriting from FL window, so self is an instance of FL window. Question: Does FL window have a dot x? And the answer is it does. Uh oh. So when you so this is one of the okay. This is a trade-off here. Now, what if I simply did not import FLTK in this way? What if I imported it as just import FLTK? I could do that, but then what I'd have to do is, for example, right here, I'd have to type uh, FLTK dot, 
And so I'd have to, for, for, now they wouldn't have to do that for everything, but wherever I have, let's say also for like button here, I'd have to type in FLTK dot. And since, it, since all the FLTK widgets already come with FL underscore in front of them, I feel like this is just uh, too much typing because I'm not going to create my own um, w variable called FL underscore. So therefore, uh, in order to prevent me from just typing all this extra FLTK dot, I imported it in this manner. However, now when we're coming to the class and now we're going to create a variable in the class, if I go dot, if I use x, that's not, that's, that's a bad thing because now I'm actually messing with the internal variables of the, of the window. So therefore, I had to change variables to IND, which stands for index. I mean, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, I know some people who are uh, Python programmers will prefer to just imp go uh, import FLTK. I think I've said enough. So the next thing I do is um, I also need files to be persistent throughout the class because I do access files in other functions. Okay, uh, for example, right there, I needed to clear the files and extend them. By the way, this is a really good, uh, also another great situation to discuss how I could change this. For example, part of the reason why I had done uh, self dot or, so, or sorry, in the other program where I don't have self, in this program, part of the reason why I did files.clear and not files equals uh, empty list was because I didn't want to create a local variable. Guess what? I don't have to worry about that anymore. I can, so in this situation, I can go files equals empty because now it's not a local variable anymore. Why not? because I've got self in front of it. And that's now, it's a class variable. Oh, sorry, it's not a class variable, it's, a, it's an instance variable. And so therefore, uh, I don't have to worry about creating local variables. So there are, my point explaining this, is that there are definite advantages to object-oriented programming uh, because you have these variables that are in the class and they're accessible from everywhere. So we don't need global and we don't need to uh, worry about creating local variables as long as we're using, uh, as long as they're part of the class with self. So let's go back up here and um, this has also made another interesting decision. Notice that get file names is not part of the class, although it is a function. So let's go down to get file names and notice, look at the indentation level and you'll notice that get file names is not part of the class. Now what are some of the drawbacks and some of the, like why did I do this? Why not just make get file names part of the class? Well there is, some, there is one definite drawback to this does it work? Question. Let's. It does work, and I can I can show you. I can I can run the program, and it should it should work here. Um, animal picks okay, and you could see. Yep, it's it's working. There's no issues with it, so it is resizing and everything properly. Um, but so w why would I choose to make get file names part of the class and why would I not choose to do it? So if we look inside this function, the, in, the sole purpose of this function is to return a list of uh, file names with the full path, okay? so that we can open those images. So let's take a look. I mean, is there anything in here that is class dependent, i.e. the image viewer class? Well, not this. 
nothing here. Lister, nope, nothing here. This is creating a new list. So really, there's nothing in here that absolutely has to belong inside the class. So it works just fine being outside of the class. There's a problem though, and the problem is it's subtle and it won't, it won't necessarily show up in this instance. And that is because I'm calling get file names on line 50. I'm calling it here on line 8. Now, why is this an issue? Because if I happen, so let's just save this, right? And if I now happen to, let's say, make another file and I, uh, hold on. Okay, so this is now a class here. So if I scroll down to the bottom here and I simply um, come to this point and I say, uh, I put a line in here and let's say I say if uh, dunder name dunder equals dunder main as a string, right? Remember this, right? So now um, I would, oops, yeah, and then I'll just go like that and I've tabbed it over. So now essentially what I've done is I have um, allowed myself to be able to import this file without running anything because all I have now is a class. I have a class here at the top, image viewer, and then I've got one function, get file names. So now if I go to another um, file and I say, okay, well, you know what? I have that image viewer class, let me import it. So I'll go from image viewer oop, which is the file name, right? That's my file name, import image viewer. Guess what's gonna happen? It's not gonna work. And the reason why it's not gonna work is because when it imports that, if you import it that way, I mean, listen, we could import it another way and it would, it would actually work. If we went um, import image viewer, oops, if we did this, we're okay. If we do this line two, we're importing everything in there, including the get files function. So this is good. But if we do this from image viewer import the, just the class, then we're in trouble. And the reason we're in trouble is because this class depends on this function. And this function is not part of the class. So therefore, you know what? I'm actually not happy about this. I think we should change it. And, but, and here's the cool part about changing this, is that all we really need to do is, well, we need to highlight everything here so we can indent it. Oh, too far. Okay, so there, now it's indented. The other thing which we need to do, so it's inside the class now, because it's indented, but obviously there's one other thing which we need to do. We need to actually specify uh, self here because it is a part of the class and that always needs to be the first argument. So everything looks good now. Now ask yourself, do we need to put self inside anything in here? So let's think about that for a second. No, no. Everything here is temporary. So really, we don't need self on in anything in here. And we're returning something. We're returning a list. So this, this function is independent, which is kind of cool. We don't need self in anything. However, now we do need to have self somewhere else up here. And that is where we call the, um, that function. And it's right here on line 8. So now we do need to type in self.get there because now this function is uh, a part of the class. And now the cool thing is now it's going to work either way. If we import this class from another file using line 1, it's going to work. We're good. And if we, well, number 2, the line 2 was going to work anyways. But uh, these are fine points that 
it's kind of like, you know, if you're going to make a class and you're going to use a function outside of the class, probably a good idea to include it in the class because now the class becomes encapsulated. It doesn't need any other dependencies outside of itself. Um, okay, uh, I have a correction to make here. I was actually under the impression that if you import something with line one, if you say f from some file name, import a class, that it would only take that class. But I'm wrong. Python's a behavior, actually, which I just discovered, is that it'll actually import everything in that file, including the other uh, get file names function that was not part of the class. Because the get file names was not inside the if name equals main. So it actually got this file as well. So long story short, th this, if I imported using line one here or line two, uh, it's going to work. The only difference is how I call it. So um, I could s image viewer. So, you know, 300 comma 30. If I import it using line one, so if I comment out line two, uh, then I could uh, use line six. So I would comment this line out. Okay, so with, with line one, you don't actually have to specify the, the file that it's coming from. You can just call the function directly. Whereas if I did it with uh, line two, now I can I have to uh, go oop dot. Now I didn't feel like typing in image viewer underscore oop, so I just said as oop. But nonetheless, these are two different ways. Uh, you'd have to call the function or the, the, in, the instance of the class. But in any case, the point being here is that I was wrong in that if I left get file names outside of the class, uh, it still works. So it still works inside the class or outside the class because if you import the class, wh whichever way you import the, the, the file, whether you import it like line one or line two, everything's getting imported. So I just learned something today. Okay. Um, now let's actually get down to back to the code. So essentially, what I've done here is I have changed the arguments that are passed to create the instance. Notice that in the original. Um, Hold on. Okay, so notice that in this line, we're bound by FLTK's arguments to pass to FL window. But in our example, we've changed it. So notice here on line 63, I actually don't pass any arguments to the image viewer class, none. So all of them are default arguments. And in fact, I could specify some, but the interesting thing here is that notice the arguments I'm passing. It's x, y, but not width and height. It's the picture width and the button width. And then I calculate the width and the height inside later. So I'm passing different arguments to my class than, to an, than I would to an FL window. Once I calculate the, the window width here on line 9, and I have an arbitrary value for the window height, I go ahead now and I can call the base class uh, in it, which I have to do. Then I go in and I start adding my widgets, like my button and all this. And this is the same as procedural, except I just have self in front of all my widgets because I want them to persist in the class. And also notice here that when I go dot resize, I'm actually calling that on the window. So I'm going self dot resizable, and I'm setting uh, the pick box as the resizable widget. 
Then I, I'm, here I am in my class for the next one. So when I click on a button, um, I can do a few things. And one of the things which I changed here was I didn't need to use extend because I'm not going to create a local variable because I'm using self on files. Um, and every, everything pretty much is the same. Uh, I just have to use self.files because now that's a, a, an instance variable. And everything looks good. Okay? So this is now, I've successfully converted this file into an object-oriented version. And, and I, I did run it before. If we, if we run it, 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 it works fine. And you notice the uh, box is actually changing size vertically to have the correct aspect ratio. However, there is something that I'd like to add to this. And that is, watch this. If I grab the edge here and I change it, notice that when I change the the size of the window manually, this image doesn't change size. Obviously, I can't keep the correct aspect ratio here. That's the reason why I have the buttons. When I click the buttons, it creates, it changes the size of the window to the correct aspect ratio for the image. That was the whole purpose of it. But, Nonetheless, how would I change the size of the image breaking the aspect ratio, but such, such that the image would essentially fit perfectly in the pick box? So that's what I'm going to show you next. Okay, so what I'm going to do here in order to do that is I'm going to have to override my pick box. So I'm going to have to make a new class. And so I'll do that at the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new class called, let's just call it my box. Uh, it's not really important at this. Uh, perhaps I should use a more descriptive name, but I'll just call it my box. I'm going to actually uh, inherit from FL box. And the reason why I'm going to inherit from FL box is because if you'll notice here on line 21, um, pick box is an FL box. So therefore, I'm going to inherit from FL box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to create the init method. Here, let's make some space here so it looks a little bit nicer. I'm going to make the init method for it. And of course, I'm going to have to pass itself. And since this is a regular FLTK widget, I'm going to have to pass it x, y, width, and height. And inside here, the first thing I want to do is I want to call the base class uh, init method. So I will go FL box dot under under init. Okay, and now let's pass it all the arguments that we just accepted x, y, width, and height. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to since since I kind of know that this FL box is going to be containing images. And since it is a widget, I'm just going to set the, I can't type self. There we go. Uh, I'm going to set the image attribute, which is not, I'm not creating a new image attribute here. I'm just basically saying, listen, uh, the image attribute that all widgets have, right? Because if you think about it, where does FL box come from? FL box inherits from widget. So therefore, my box also inherits from widget. So therefore, it has an image uh, field I can, an attribute that I could assign. So that's fine right there. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to override the draw method. 
and let me show you where that comes from. Okay, so let's go, to, let's go to the widget um, class, because all widget class, classes have a draw method. So let's, it's alphabetical here, so let's find draw. There it is. Okay, now look what this says. It says never, never call this function directly. Override this function to draw your own widgets. Ha ha, that's what I wanna do, okay? And so essentially, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna come here, so you can, you can read what this says, and it's, it's a virtual uh, method so that I, I, it's overridable. So watch this. I'm simply now going to go, this is so cool. This is the lovely part about object-oriented programming. I'm now going to override the draw method. Of course, it's part of the class, so I'm going to have to go self. And now, I'm going to call the... Now listen, this is important. I'm, I'm not going to do everything that draw needs to do. So I'm going to say, listen, I know that there are things that an, an FL box needs to do to draw itself. So you know what? Go ahead and do it. Here you go. I'm calling draw on the base class. So I'm going super dot draw. But now I can add extra functionality to the draw method after it's finished drawing itself. And I'm going to say if self.image is not equal to none. Notice that I set it equal to none here, right? But notice that inside my class, I set the image in uh, right here on line 57. I set the image. So now as soon as it has an image, when I call redraw, what does redraw do? Okay, notice here it says, if your widget must be redrawn as soon as possible, call redraw instead. What does redraw do? It schedules the drawing of the widget marks the widget as needing its draw routine called. Ha ha! That's exactly what needs to happen here. So now, I, I am setting an image for it and I am calling redraw on that. But notice here, if now the image is not none, so what should I do? Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go self dot image and now I'm gonna go Let's change it. Let's go self dot image, and now I'll do the dot copy here, and now I'll say self dot um, the width, and I, I'm gonna write. Ch I'm, I'm changing the size of the image to the right size, so I'm gonna actually uh, get the size of my box. And to get the size of my box, I'm gonna go self dot w and self dot height. And that's what I want it to be. And then I'm going to have to close that off. So now, notice, if I, I've, I've got to do one thing, though, because now I've changed this to using my box class. OK, don't need an extra space here. So we'll get rid of that. But this is still not going to work, because notice that here, I'm not actually creating a my box. I'm creating an FL box. So I'm going to fix this and say, no, use a my box instead. And and that's it. That's all I need to do. So now when I run this, watch what's going to happen. I'll pick my animals again. And now if I go to my first animal and it's and and now let's 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 go to here, let's go to let's say this one. Watch this. Ready? I'm going to dra drag the corner and now watch. Notice that it's resizing the image on the fly. Now it's a little bit slow, and that's just because I'm actually con uh, showing. I'm actually u connected through VNC, and so uh, uh, that's not that won't happen if you run it on your own computer. But there is something that's not good about this. Watch what's going to happen if I continue changing the image size. Do you notice it? Okay, 
Do you notice what's going on? Every time I change the image, the image gets becomes worse and worse. It, it is working properly, so that's kind of cool. But I really don't like this uh, losing image quality every time I change the image size. Notice pretty soon, I mean, I'm not even going to be able to see uh, the, the same image. It's pretty soon after I resize it enough times, it's going to look horrible. Now, why is this occurring? And the reason why this is happening is because notice in this class, every time I, it has to redraw itself when it resizes. And by the way, wh wh how does it know to redraw itself? Because look here, I'm actually in the next CB one. Oh, actually, you know, that's not quite true. Uh, because I'm not clicking on the button. No, the reason why it knows to redraw itself is because draw needs n understands that when I resize things, it needs to call draw again. So this is all happening transparently in, in with FLTK. But the, but the problem is, is that look what's happening. The image that we're seeing is continually getting resized and every time it resizes, it, we're losing quality. It, in other words, it's not resizing from the original image. It's resizing from the changed image. This isn't good. Now, how can we, how can we prevent this? Okay, so we're going to fix this. How are we going to fix it? Well, what we need to understand is that it would be lovely if we could actually have my box store a copy of the original image instead of continually resizing the same image. It needs to store the original image and then resize that so that we don't lose quality. So the way to do this here is we're going to have to actually fix this by going, listen, we can add attributes. Okay, so I'm going to have to fix this line, and I'm going to actually add a an attribute to this thing, and I'm I'm going to set it as none. But notice this is different. I'm not before I was actually accessing something that was already a part of the widget class. Now I'm adding to it. Now I'm saying self.pick equals none. Okay. In addition here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create now a set method. I'm going to say set image and, and it's, it's a class method and I'm going to have to have an image here. Oops. Okay. And now what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say self.pick equals uh, image. Now this, I want you to know, this is the stored image. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say self.image. Now this is not something that I've made. This is part of FLTK. And I'm going to set that to the image. Okay. So that's going to be the displayed image. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call self.redraw. Okay? But now I have to, I have to change something down here. Uh, I still have to call super draw. And this is, this is still okay, but I'm going to actually change this to uh, pick. And but now I'm going to say instead of saying here self.image, which is the reason why I kept losing quality, I'm simply now going to say uh, resize the original copy and set that as the displayed one. So every time draw happens, I'm actually going to be resizing the original image, make a copy of it to the right size. And so now 
look what happens. If I save this and I run it, and uh, oops, hold on a second. It looks like I have a problem. Okay, so I had to change a couple, a few things here. Uh, one, I had to change right here on line 16. Pick was actually a function call. Uh, it's not. It's an. It's a. It's a field. So there's no function call for pick. And also here as well. Okay. Uh, image is still a function call, and that's why we have the brackets there. But you notice every time I resize the image, I'm actually doing dot copy on self dot pick. So it's in essence I'm taking the original image, the stored image, and I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm, when, I re, when it redraws, it's redrawing the original every time so it shouldn't lose quality. Also, the other thing which I'm, I have to do is down here, since we're actually calling redraw in set image right on line 12 right there, we don't actually have to call redraw in our regular code. And so right here, uh, I've commented it out. And I've also commented out the old way of setting the image because I'm going to use the function uh, that I created because it has to store the image every time the image changes. So in essence now, uh, when I run this, I can save it and run it. The cool thing now is that it should get to that dog image again. And when I resize it, it's not going to lose quality. Now, the aspect ratio is not going to stay the same, obviously, because I'm dragging the mouse. I'm holding the left mouse button down. But every time it resizes, it's going to resize from the original. And so by this point, I would have lost quality before. But now I'm not because I'm always resizing the original. So that's, uh, that's a nice way to extend uh, a class. But you got to really be careful because now is, it's easy to mess up. There's so many instances of self everywhere. So be careful. OK, so the next uh, feature that I want to add to my program is I want to extend this button widget here on the left and the right such that when I move my mouse into that button without clicking it, I want it to change color. So this is actually an interesting feature because I'm going to be having to override the handle method. So the handle method is the method which handles events. So if we come here, and I'm actually in the widget class again, so you can see I'm under FL widget. If we scroll down to handle, well, we're there already, it says handles the specified event. It accepts an event, and it returns an integer. Uh, it says you normally don't call this method directly, uh, and it says this function must return zero if the widget does not use the event or one if it does utilize the event. So most of the time you want to call the inherited handle method in your overridden method. Uh, and be careful not to short circuit events that you don't handle. In other words, you better send it back as with a return value of zero. Now, we're going to override this method now such that we're going to change the way the widget behaves to specific events. So let's go to the main FLTK documentation page and let's take a look at the enumerations so we can see in the enumerations what are some events that we'd like to uh, change behavior for. So here is events and the one I'm going to, to change is FL or the one I'm going to change the behavior for is for FL enter and FL leave. 
So when you enter, when the mouse pointer enters a widget, this event is generated. And when you leave, another event is generated. So simply by moving my mouse over top of this method, the enter event occurs. And when I leave the widget, the FL leave event occurs. So we're going to have to go back to the code and we're going to have to extend or create new classes for those buttons. So let's do that. Okay, so here is an example of <coughs> what not to do. <laughs> I have created a new class called my button and I'm inheriting from FL button. Okay? And down in my code, if you'll see, my left button now is an instance of my button, and my right button is also changed from an FL button to my button. So now when we go up to the the this new my button class that I've made, which inherits from FL button, I have to make the init method, right? And that's fine, that's standard x, y, width and height. And I call init on the base class, FL button. Nothing new there. You've already learned how to do that. But here, I'm overriding the handle method. And when I say this is an example of what not to do, if you'll remember in the handle method, so here I've gone back to the handle method. Notice it says most of the time you want to call the inherited handle method in your overridden method so that you don't short circuit events that you don't handle. In order to kind of understand what's happening here, we have to understand how FLTK deals with events. So when an event is generated, like a key press or a mouse uh, click or anything like that. All these events are sent to the children of the window of the group. And if, an, if, a, a, if a widget handles the event, then it returns one. If it doesn't handle the event, then FLTK has to take that event and, and, and it asks another a, a child do you want to handle this event? So each, each uh, widget has to decide if they're going to handle it. And they, and they make this decision in their handle method. So right now, I'm actually doing something I'm not supposed to. Because as you can see, here is my handle method. I'm not actually calling the base class's handle method as it's recommending that I do here. You want to call the inherited handle method in your overridden method. I'm not doing that. So what is, what's going to happen here? Well, essentially, I'm only the only thing I'm doing is I'm just checking if the event is an enter, then print enter. If it's a leave, print leave, and then say the event has been handled. So watch what happens when I run this. So if I run this and we get the, uh, so I, maybe I can pull it aside here. So you can see the output here, right? When I go in, it says enter. When I go out, it says leave. That's good. Okay, so that's working. But what if I click on it? I am clicking on it right now. You can't see it, but I am clicking on it. But nothing's happening. So essentially, I have short-circuited the, that, that event is happening. The click, the left click is happening, but since I have overridden the method, the handle method, I'm not actually calling, so just like I'm not calling the base class's handle method. So if you'll notice like here, it's very similar to the init actually function. Notice the first thing you have to do in init is you have to call the base class's init method. So we have to do the same thing here as well. So this is how we do it. We say we created this new variable called retval for return value. And we're calling super, the base class, in this case, which would be the FL button, handle method, and we're passing it event. So event comes for, is passed into this overridden handle function. And we take that, by the way, event is an integer. 
and we pass it to the base classes handle method and we get a return value. Now it's important that this return value that we return it, in other words send it because what if it was handled so we have to go return ret value but we could just use it we could just use another variable but ret value is fine however obviously if we put, if we put return there this function is going to be over with and we're never going to get to this code here so that's not where we should put this line we're going to take it out of there and we'll put it down here in fact instead of saying um, return one. Okay, so you can see how I've changed the code here. So what I've done is I've said if the event is an FL enter, print enter, and then return one. That means it's handled. Um, if the event is leave, then print leave and return one. So the function's over with in either case. But now what if the event is not an FL enter and it's not an FL leave? In that case, what we need to return, else return, so any other situation other than enter and leave, we have to return ret value, or R-E-T-V-A-L, which is comes from line nine. And they may be, there may be uh, so many different types of events that occur. We're only handling two of those event types here. So in any other case, we need to let the FL button uh, decide upon the return value of the event. So now, when I run it, notice that I do get enter and I do get leave, enter and leave, but now if I click it, it still works. So in other words, I'm not circumventing FLTK's uh, event management in this situation. So that's a good thing. So this is the proper way to call the base classes handle method sending it the event that this handle event receives and then check to see what the event is and we can do something based on what it is and if and if we do something with that event then return one since we've handled it and listen if we didn't handle it if the end ha if the event happened to be something other than what we're looking for then we need to uh, be good about returning what the base class's handle method returned. Okay? So if we don't return something, we need to return what the base class returned. Okay? Now in this case, listen, because this function is part of the my button class, instead of printing enter, I'm going to do something a little bit more uh, cool. I'm going to go self.color and set it to fl blue when you enter and I'm going to go self.redraw so that the, it actually redraws it with the blue and here I'm also going to get rid of that print and I'm going to go uh, self color. Now in this case, I'm actually going to go FL. Now let's go and take a look at the documentation. Let me show you the color. here. Okay, so in the enumerations, right, main page enumerations, there are color constants and FL background color is the default background color. And there's FL blue just below it right there. So if I go back to my code, I want this to be FL background color. And you can, I mean, you can use whatever color you want. Uh, it's just a choice. And I also have to call redraw again. 
But the cool thing now about this is, watch what happens when I run this. So when I bring my mouse in here, it turns blue. And when I leave, it turns the normal background gray color again. But now also, I can still click on it, and it still works. And so this is a really cool feature because I'm, I've extended the uh, ability of how the button or how a widget reacts to certain events. And I'm not just limited by this. The, the possibilities are endless in this situation. Because if we go to in the enumerations and we go to uh, the events, look at how many events we can, we can uh, react to, so to speak. There's quite a few. And so it really, the FLTK in that regard becomes very flexible. And I love it because it's so customizable. And on top of that, it's adhering to the object-oriented uh, programming style because now we're not only creating our own widgets, but we're extending existing widgets. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you guys next time.